All right. Thanks. Thanks so much for Kavya uh, for the introduction. And um, as you said, uh, the last week there was a there was a good session. Um, pretty much the same that I'm going to cover this week. Uh, you know, uh, those who have attended it last week, you know, you might find uh, you might find it not very interesting because you've already heard it. Um, but but the same content is presented in a different context. Uh, so you should really understand when I present the same content in a different context, what I really mean. Last week I used the same content to talk about a very very different subject. Today I'm going to use the same content to talk about a very very different subject. So today we're going to speak speak about brand positioning and co-branding co with alliances. What do you mean by an alliances? A, a possible partnership, right? Um, so let's uh, let's quickly get onto the first slide. Uh, good marketing is no accident. Okay, and and probably you know if you are doing a first year M MBA, first semester of MBA, second semester of MBA, or a third semester of MBA, or your BBA, you know, uh, you might be told that marketing is an art as well as a science. Now, there is a constant tension between its formulated side and creative side. Now, what's a formulated side? So the science part of marketing is a is a formulated side of mar you know marketing. And there is an art side of marketing, which is the creative side of marketing. Now, what I intend to tell you today is it's, it's very, very easy to learn the formulated side of marketing, but it's very, very quite difficult to learn the creative side of marketing. Learn, learning arts is much more difficult than learning science. Now, um, now, you might have heard it otherwise from a lot of places, but you know it's actually the other way around. There is a dichotomy between humanities and science across the world in the way we teach the subject. And for some reason, I've got caught uh, in, in evangelizing uh, humanities and art as a science, you know, as a subject uh, rather than science alone. You, know, you could see that you know, a lot of people are opting in for science as you know, learning engineering or medical science or you know, whatever other, other things they're learning. There are very, very, very few people who comes up and says, that, okay, I want to become an artist, I want to become a painter. Right, I want to become an um, you know, architect. You know, even architect, there's a lot of creative side to it involved in um, uh, in 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 the in, in studying architecture. Right. So, in a nutshell, there's a lot of creative side to marketing, and I'm going to focus a lot of lot on the creative side today to help you understand what do you really mean by brand positioning. And let's say, for example, if you were to create a brand for yourself, how will you go about creating a brand? Right. Let's uh, look at uh, a helicopter view of marketing. You know, you might be learning the four P's of marketing or the seven P's of marketing. Let's look at it from the seven P's of marketing: product, prices, promotion, place, packaging, positioning, and people. Right. Now, these are all different P's, or you know, these are all things that you will actually end up doing as a marketer, but. To be able to do anything, you should have an objective, right? Uh, for example, your life should have an objective. It should have a purpose. Why do you live, right? What am I going to become uh, once I finish my graduation or post-graduation? What's the purpose of what I'm going to do, right? So similarly, marketing has also got its objectives. And according to me, and according to various other people, uh, marketing has got you know roughly four different objectives, as I sh show you. In, in this particular slide. One is to create an awareness about your product or your service or your brand. Right? Create an awareness, right? Um, let's say you're selling a mobile phone. There has to be a creation of awareness. People should come to know about it, right? Now, to create an awareness, you might use packaging, positioning, or promotion. Or you, you must say let's, say, let's assume that you might use a promotion and packaging to create an awareness of your product or service, and thereby trying to create a brand position in someone's mind. What, what, do you, what, what is a brand? It's a perception about a certain service or a certain product in somebody's mind. It's a, it's a, it's a positioning is nothing but it's a as per L. Reese, um, and Jack Trout. It's a battle for your mind, right? Uh, you're trying to gain some space in your mind. Let's so say, let's say Ajish Venugopalan as an individual today. If I were to remain a brand in your mind, it's really, really going to depend on how I'm going to deliver this particular webinar or the student development program over the next 50 minutes. 
if i do good i'm going to remain in your mind as a brand if i don't i may not you you understand what i'm saying so over the next 15 minutes even i'm doing marketing and there is some of the other way that you are also doing marketing so that means given any minute everyone in this world is trying to do some or the other way of marketing either for himself or for his company or for a product or a service or for anything else right so roughly the primary objective of marketing is brand awareness the second is engage engage with the set of prospects that may be a potential buyer engage with a potential buyer how will you go about and engage with a potential buyer like the way i am doing i am engaging with a set of students probably tomorrow you might come and my buy my book or you may come and buy a training program for me so that's a potential engagement in terms of i am engaging with a set of customers right and out of these a, a set of few students may actually a few students in vet may actually become end up becoming my student right so that could possibly be a lead and then i convert that lead into a into into a, into my student sort of a thing right so if you look at this particular diagram i'm talking about there are three or four different objectives cutting across the various target markets that you're facing or or you you're targeting for example it could be b to c marketing it could be employees for example let's say you work for a large company you have hundreds of thousands of employees working for your company you have to constantly brand your company in 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 the minds of your employees as well so there is a sector of marketing called employer branding right so you need to create a specific position of your brand in the minds of your employees so that could be your one of your b2b b2c customer okay let's say for example if you are hindustan unilever or if you are a wipro consumer care you know you're selling a soap like a santoor or a life boy or a you know um or a or a pass right you you are talking about targeting a b to c audience you know business to consumer business to consumers directly right but if you look at companies like a wipro or an infosys or a cognizant you are talking about b to b marketing wherein you are you are targeting a different company your company is selling it to a different company so therefore it is b to b marketing right and a third type of your target audience could be analyst or your advisors or your investors let's say somebody has put in 5 million dollars in your business you have to constantly ensure that you know you show improvement on your brand in the minds of your investors as well so there is a certain set of marketing that you do in front of them right and and to communicate these sort of messages and achieve these sort of objectives you have various channels you know i'm sure some most of you have covered your first semester would have learned channels of marketing right you have your print your you know and and your print could include your uh, press releases or a public relation you know it could you know include your newspapers like your dinatanti or dinamalar or you know the hindu or the times of india or whatever right it could include your magazines and a pr it could include events events like uh, uh, consumer fair happening or you know maybe uh, just to take an example from erode i think there is a there is a textile expo which keeps happening in around in and around that area you know it's a physical event where people lot of people come come in together create it as a marketplace and do it as an event right uh and the solution is one one way of one channel to create better brand right there's today's world we are talking about a lot of things in digital and social media right you have your facebook you have your linkedin you have your instagrams you have your tiktok right um and and um so so therefore you know uh, uh, you can you can use community also as a medium or a channel for your marketing you have a website blogs you know, you know you print your t-shirts with with maybe your name or your company's name that's called that's called a special brand of marketing channel called merchandising right and then you have employer branding you can use the word of mouth marketing you can use references so in in a nutshell this is a a, a in one one slide i'm trying to talk about uh, how deep a ma marketing or how deep a marketer should go uh, potentially right now let's look at uh, you know the various objectives as i mentioned uh, creating awareness uh, driving consideration and generating a lead for your business and then converting that lead into a customer right so in a nutshell that looks like a funnel right and somewhere in the middle of this particular slide i mentioned the prosumer a prosumer is nothing but a customer who act 
actively interacts with your company and becomes a part of a uh, part of a uh, part of having part of critical decisions of an organization for example uh, there could be a set of customers who can actually end up buying uh, shares of your company and and end up becoming a board of director right uh, that is one kind of prosumer there are multiple other kinds of prosumer wherein uh, uh, you know there could be a let's say let's say there could be a set of 100 loyal customers who could actually end up becoming a prosumer because the company is going to reach out to this first 100 sets of loyal customers when they do a new product launch or when they do a new new product release or a service release right they're going to take feedbacks from these consumers and trying to understand whether i am in the right direction so that's that's called the prosumer so in today's world with the advent of uh, internet and other various digital and social technology uh consumers are very very intelligent you know you can't fool them any longer so you know it's if if you were to do marketing and you think that your consumer is a fool then probably not the consumer but you are the fool right so the consumers are very very powerful in in short right and you know as i told you we live in a very 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 interesting time you know we live in a we, we live in an era where everyone is a marketer if i were to ask a question um how many of you are there on instagram or tiktok or facebook you're constantly taking photographs and putting it in in some of these pla platforms or you are you know some of you uh, who are attending today who is probably a little more creative uh then many of us are might be doing some interesting videos in tiktok as well and and probably that's in circulation uh in social media so we in a, we live in an era where everyone is a marketer uh everyone has got a smartphone and and you have the power to take your voice uh to the rest of the world right uh so essentially you know as i told you we all live in a tiktok era and now how does it really help you create a brand position uh, quickly and faster let's let's take a, a look at it right uh, so as i told you the consumer is no longer listening he's he's uh, he's you know he's a prosumer and there is a, there is too much noise today because because of the fact that everybody has got a smartphone everybody is in and around instagram or facebook or twitter or you know tiktoks of the world um, there is a lot of information which is going on uh, around and it's accessible to you you are you are able to access that piece of information and therefore when you have too much of choices uh, you actually get confused as to which one do i really buy uh so so that's this this is essentially a, a specific study that has been proven um uh, by one of one of the famous uh, professors in consumer behavior studies that if you are given too many choices let's say you are selling uh, pickle you no know, you you keep you keep only three brands of pickles it's easier to sell one of the brands and and uh, and the number of sales also goes up but if you have 50 brands of pickle in the same store you know people end up buying lesser your sales actually goes down that and that's a proven study that has been done by uh, uh, various various professors who study consumer behavior and psychology right now um while we focus a lot more on studying the science piece of it the focus on studying the art piece of marketing is very very less but can you can you really you know study you know if you're studying you know a, a textbook you are you are probably looking at uh, a subject called marketing management or you know principles of marketing management right now why is this particular subject classified under management is it is it is marketing management alone or or is there something else to do uh, with marketing in my um you know understanding and experience over the last multiple years working as a practicing marketer i believe that there are four different subjects which come together to become marketing as a as a whole and they are these right it's a sub if you if you remember learning set theory in your mathematics it's a subset of four sets and i see these are the four sets or these are the four subjects which essentially come together uh, to create a modern marketer uh, so first subject is creativity uh, and innovation you, know, you might be if any of you decide to go for higher studies or your uh, you know 
uh, or your doctorates, you might be wanting to take a specialize in innovation and creativity, design thinking, you know, such kind of subjects. You know, there's always human beings are very, very curious. You know, there's always uh, a curious side of the mind, which is trying to do something really new. And and in a nutshell, if I were to summarize creativity, coming up with something very, very new, a, a unique idea, a very new idea, right? Or a very new concept, you know, it could be a lo lot more things, you know, it, it's, it isn't very easy to define creativity as such, you know, it, it, it could mean different things to different people as well, right? The other subject is psychology. It's like, what is psychology? It's a, it's, it's a study dealing with your mind, right? What you're thinking, uh, you know, uh, if you were to looking at buying a product, uh, what are the kind of thought patterns that goes through your mind and how do you really make a decision uh, in terms of buying a particular product or, or a service, right? And uh, the other two subjects are technology and data and analytics. You know, technology today is capable of helping you with a lot of data. Then under data analytics, there's a subject called statistics, organizational you know, research that you learn uh, while, while you're doing your you know, probably your MBA or you know, BBA uh, sort of curriculums. Um, so all of these, you know, you, you would have wondered, right? When you when you learn marketing, when you take marketing as a sub specialization, or when you do MBA as a specialization, uh, you have OR as a subject. You have uh, some some of you might have consumer behavior as a subject. Some of you may have, um, you know systems marketing as a subject right some of you have you will have mis which which deals with data analytics you have statistics as a subject what i'm trying to tell you is you know uh, if you want to become a real real really good successful marketer all these subjects come together uh, to play a very important role in making you a, a, a successful marketer uh, if you think that you can just do away with studying marketing um, probably you're wrong there is a lot of other things that you need to learn uh, to be able to become a successful marketer, right? Uh, let's quickly take a look at this video. This was the latest campaign that I did. Uh, take a look at this video. Uh, this, this this video or this campaign was done for a company called CSS Corp, which is uh, which which is you know, and 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 the, and the campaign is really really apt for the current COVID crisis. Take a look at the video and and try and understand how am I trying to position uh, CSS Corp as a brand in the minds of the people who are going to watch this film. Right uh, here you go. The year 2020. Many hearts have lost their rhythm. Countries lie engulfed in lockdown, leaving the spirit of the world broken and the economy crumbling. However, the rhythm of life cannot be silenced by adversities or the pandemic. Our lives have the power to self-heal and heal others. The rhythm of hope still reverberates in millions of ears from our homes. CSS Corp. adopted a 100% work from home quickly and bounced back to work. Restoring hope, not just for itself, but for hundreds of customers and millions of end consumers. The idea of customer service resonates well across CSS Corp. globally. Resilience takes a distinctive place in our lives. And that's the rhythm of CSS Corp. We salute the many unsung heroes. CSS Corp thanks its 7,000 plus global employees for being resilient. CSS Corp. Great. I, I hope you all had a chance to take a look at the film. Now let's let's try and understand what, what are we trying to say. You no, know, had I got time, I would have made it interactive, but you know, I think the time is very, very limited. So uh, I'll just go ahead and explain this. You know, did I did I really need uh, you no know, look at it from the four different subjects that I spoke about marketing? You no, know, did I really need data and analytics to come up with the film? Uh, the answer is no, because uh, it's everywhere, right? It's a pandemic. Uh, it's everywhere. Uh, everybody knows that uh, today the situation is, um, uh, you know, uh, 
a pandemic situation we are in deep crisis people are not able to move out of their homes it's a lockdown right uh, we are coming up with new ways of working we are not able to go to our offices we are not able to take out our cars or two wheelers and drive down to mm-hmm. our offices in the current days uh, i don't need data to do to, you know look at that right uh, i don't need data to sort of understand you uh, know uh, that everybody is working from home today because it's it's every it's a available everywhere no now there are there are situations which does not require data and analytics uh, to be able to do that but maybe to create a video like this i may take help of technology i use an adobe creative cloud as a tool or maybe i may use a, a very high high end video production software right so technology helps me create a video like this but what helps me put together the story uh, the, the story is put together uh, only by understanding psychology of people and and being being able to come up with something unique which is creativity uh to be able to create a film like this right now what am i trying to tell uh, to the people who are watching the film right there are many companies of uh, you know uh, who who not been able to adapt uh, to 100% work from home model no for some people there is no internet connectivity they have young kids at home they are not able to work from home no css corp as an organization was able to achieve 100% work from work from home and all the 7000 employees who worked for them was able to do and adapt to the new way of working uh, very quickly and that's essentially what we're trying to tell you know it's it's a, it's 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 a, it's a it's a unique skill called resilience what do you mean by resilience you know resilience means you know your your ability to stand up and face life after you face a failure right for example you see a you see a man with an amputated an artificial limb running there right a man loses a leg in an accident but he still wants to become a runner he wants to become a para olympian right or he wants to become a dancer it depends upon your particular ability to be able to resilient and fight back and give it back to the society in terms of you know putting up a good fight right bouncing back to life after a fall is is precisely resilience and that concept was was ideally positioned uh in the minds of the people and and you're positioning css corp as a brand uh, who's able to you know uh, quickly stand up and bounce back to a certain worst or adverse conditions adverse situations right this is how you create a, a certain brand positioning you know when you talk about brand positioning how, what what are the kind of subjects which you actually help you create a brand position is largely psychology data and analytics in this case i haven't used much data and analytics but you could have used much data and analytics you know uh, you could have used use use technology to collect a lot more data around around, around covid and you could have done something else altogether right but and to understand human psychology you may or may not use uh, data because for some of us it comes comes naturally it comes from intuition and it comes from your experience of dealing with multiple different types of people right let's quickly uh, get in uh, and 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 look at more examples of of uh, co-creating brands so for example you are not uh talking about so far we spoke about one brand but if you look at the subject for the webinar today we are talking about co-branding with alliances so for example uh sony and ericsson right maruti suzuki these are two different companies coming in together they co-brand themselves and and create a compelling positioning in the minds of the consumers in in our country right let's uh start by looking at this example On October the 1st, 2001, Sony, a Japanese electronics company founded in 1946, joined Swedish-born Ericsson, 70 years its senior, in holy matrimony. The early years of marriage gave rise to some fascinating and varied offspring, namely the P800 PDA, the T100 with its monochromatic display, and the Z200 and S700 with their respective clamshell and swivel form factors. In 2002, a fall in market share caused speculation of an ugly separation, but after kissing and making up, both husband and wife reinvested money into the venture, thus underlining their commitment to each other and their union. 
Born unto Sony and Ericsson in the summer of 2005 was the T610, a bouncing little camera phone and the first of many. Indeed, June 2005 was a happy and prosperous month for the proud parents, with the arrival of a playmate for the T610 in the form of the K750. Sony and Ericsson couldn't have been more proud of their little K750, who grew up to be the best-selling Sony Ericsson phone of all time. In 2005, and closely followed in 2006, the first Walkman and Cybershot feature phones were delivered. Come 2007, things couldn't have been rosier for the happy family, with 100 million handsets sold, making it a most prosperous year. But then, towards the end of the year, a dark figure loomed upon the horizon, determined to spoil the smartphone party and push the relationship to its limits. In response to the iPhone came the Xperia X1 running Windows Mobile, and then the beginning of an extramarital affair with Android, marked with the birth of the X10. In 2009, the world's first 12 megapixel camera phone took the stage, the initially well-received Satio. But this black sheep of the family was expelled from both Carphone Warehouse and Phones For You, with software issues being cited as the reason in the sullied school report. Green heart phones, handsets with Bravia engines and the bouncing Best Buy Xperia Play with its PlayStation endorsement have all followed in their older siblings' footsteps, but none of them have yet been able to replicate the success of the older models. Recent data shows Sony Ericsson handsets slipping down the ladder to become the 10th most sold phone manufacturer in the world, suggesting the marriage is going through a particularly rocky period. So the 10 years of marriage has had its ups and downs for Sony Ericsson, but what will the next 10 years hold? Read in-depth, impartial reviews of all the latest Sony Ericsson handsets at which.co.uk forward slash mobile. All right, how many, how many of you really have seen a Sony Ericsson mobile phone? Uh, probably this generation, I doubt, you know, uh, but you know, um, our generation, you know, when we were doing our final year of graduation and you know maybe the first year of MBA, that's that was the time around when when the first mobile phone came in India. You know, and we were we were using uh, Nokia three two one zero. You know, I remember that phone very well. It was Sony Ericsson phone as well. Uh, it the brand uh, that came together. Sony is, is a Japanese company for your information, and Ericsson is a Swedish company uh, based out of Sweden, right? You know, there's two different. Uh, countries and culture coming in together, uh, creating a single brand for India, and they're marketing it in a third country, which is India, right? Japan, Sweden, coming together to India, trying to create a brand, right? Uh, let's 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 look at you know, let's look look at and understand. Uh, you don't hear the brand today, um, so you don't you don't you don't find so Sony Ericsson mobile phones in today's world because it's it failed. Uh, it's it's obvious. Uh, how did it fail? Let's let's try and understand why it failed. Let's look at uh, one of the ads of Ericsson in isolation, and let's look at an ad of Sony Ericsson together. Right? Uh, a few observations. You know, how did they try to put, create a position uh, in in the minds of people in India? Let's take a look at that. Hello. What are you doing tonight? Me? Join me for dinner. Sure. See you at eight. One black coffee, please. Ericsson mobile phones, surprisingly small. Look at this. Look at this ad. You know, uh, how do you create a brand promos, uh, uh, no position? You know, you, using your promotions and one of the promotions, you know, which was in the form of an advertisement here, uh, showcasing a lot of negative emotion there. Uh, uh, a man's heart being broken. But what is a brand trying to actually talk about? Uh, uh, surprisingly, very very small uh, mobile phones, and that is probably the first time the world was seeing such small mobile phones. Uh, so it is a very interesting feature. Uh, that they were talking about, uh, but the way they presented it, uh, with the kind of emotion that it should have been, uh, it's 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 negative emotion that they all together bring in, right? Now let's look at a look at a, the next ad of Sony Ericsson together.
W8, world's first Walkman smartphone on Reliance 3G. I can't stop looking for you. Stop looking. I can't stop. Right product, right place, wrong promotion. Uh, the reason that I say that is uh, that is the first time when you know, I've, uh, and I've used a Sony Ericsson Walkman phone. You know, I'm not sure how many of you have. Um, it was a very very interesting phone and you know was used specifically for you know was targeted music lovers were targeted right when you target the music lovers you know the ad actually shows a, a woman chasing a man and, and i'll be surprised if a woman really chase a man in our country uh, as per our culture uh, it, it's it's quite complex isn't it uh, so understanding culture of our country is very important um, you know in our country probably men could follow a woman but you know very very rare occasions a woman follow a man uh, you get the complete context wrong uh, there is an english background song coming in you know uh, there is no usage of any a local uh, or vernacular languages uh, so completely wrong promotion but it's a good it was an amazing product for its time and and in india was a great market and india still continues to be a great market for such products right but a completely wrong promotion so just understand how you getting a wrong emotion so and and emotion is what it's part of psychology as a subject how you get a wrong emotion you know how you try to pro promote a wrong emotion get your entire positioning wrong right so again coming back it, it comes back to four different subjects so i'm trying to re-emphasize the importance of studying your statistics you know uh, when when your teacher is teaching you studying organizational uh, behavior for employer branding, consumer behavior to understand your consumers, um, operations research uh, to to solve complex marketing problems, right? Uh, and then of course, uh, marketing as your core subject, right? So all these subjects come together uh, to be able to you know uh, to be able to help you become successful marketers. Um, let's look at if this one. All right, so um, this was a movie called Dil Chata Hai by Amir Khan, um, launched around the same time when the Sony Ericsson phone was launched in India. Uh, a very, very compelling uh, movie uh, showcasing. Uh, the story of three friends uh, together. Uh, they have a little fight with each other. They go out to Goa, have fun. They they enjoy this music and other stuff. So if they were trying to really target a Sony Ericsson Walkman form, a uh, phone, you know, you could have you could have probably evoked the right emotion using the right music, the right language and stuff. So just just to this is just for an example as to what could have been a better positioning uh, for a brand like Sony Ericsson. Now let's look at look at you know what happened to this brand. This brand uh, was no longer in the picture by around 2011, right? Uh, they were pretty good in 2003, 4, 5. Uh, the the brand was pretty good between 2003, 4, 5. Right, uh, it did well till probably about 2009, but with the maybe 10 and 11, uh, the, the market share of the brand fell uh, straight 2%. Um, Nokia, Samsung came up with better technologies, and Sony Ericsson. Why did they fail? Because you know, two different countries, two different culture, they didn't have a purpose of creating a uh, a brand alliance and they, they, they were trying to form a symmetric brand alliance. What do you mean by a symmetric brand alliance? Sony and Ericsson, equally big companies, equally powerful companies from two different countries coming in together with a 50-50 market share, which uh, which delayed a lot of decision-making process within them. You know, I want to create a marketing ad, you know, promotion. It goes to two different countries, goes for approval and comes back to me. Not a good thing. 
right? Uh, your decisions should be little, little faster, uh, you know, and based on data to be able to make the right uh, approach in terms of creating the 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 this this particular partnership actually cost, costed about you know three point one billion dollar to Sony. You know, Sony actually uh, purchased all the stake from uh, Ericsson and they exited, right? Uh, so such kind of uh, alliances, you could also call it as bad marriages, uh, are, aren't really good. If you don't get the uh, right brand coming in together, you know, to create the right alliances, and also get the right positioning in the country in which you are marketing it, right? Um, the purpose, right? Sony and Ericsson, um, you know, clearly lacked a common purpose of of existence, right? Um, Look at it. What what does the shared purpose mean? You, know, you should have a shared purpose, you know, so that you know you have a, a same level of commitment towards selling a product in a certain market, um, and 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 controlling a certain behavior, right? Uh, to dive deeper into it, you know, there are there are there are specific terminologies like net promoter score, employee net promoter score, uh, earnings per share, and other 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 matrices that you can actually look at uh, to understand whether you are in the right whether you're going in the right direction for example net promoter score is you know uh, a score given to you by your customers that actually proves that the customer loyalty towards you an employee net promoter score actually proves the employee loyalty towards your organization right so some of these numbers are quite very interesting you know very critical as you learn further so we may not have time to understand the data and analytics side of marketing today but maybe we may we may we may leave that for some other some other time Right. Uh, this is a, a, a very, very powerful campaign, uh, and this, 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 this sculpture that you see on the left uh, is is uh, is called the Fearless Girl, and and the Fearless Girl as a campaign is it was a marketing campaign by a company called State Street. State Street is a is a large financial uh, services institution and a bank based out of US. You know they are they they are they are present in India as well. Probably if you drive down to Chennai or Bangalore, you may find offices of State Street as well, right? Um, you know this 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 campaign, uh, you know, uh, was was created to uh, tell the world that Street Street had the maximum number of women leaders in their organization. You know, uh, generally, if you look at the gender diversity, uh, you know, a lot of women after marriage drop out of job of, you know um, maybe after maternity they drop out of job um, you know uh, they don't you know come back sometimes you know some, sometimes they're bound by their families not being able to come back and work after a certain you know um, so certain episode in their life right because their lives are much more complex than than our lives so uh, look at it uh, from that perspective so what makes up uh, you know a campaign like this very powerful. Uh, this is a four feet tall you know, sculpture, a statue, which was kept right in front of the charging bull in NASDAQ, in, in, in Wall Street, sorry, in Wall Street, uh, right in front of the stock exchange, right? So uh, there, there was speculation, and there, there was there was there was a legal lawsuit against that, you know, because the the, the charging bull belonged to a different sculpture. He filed a complaint against this this particular sculpture and a lot of things. But look at the campaign, you know, it talks about empowering women in organizations, and and if you look at the 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 graph on the right side, it really talks about if you look at it from an organization perspective an organization is structured it has got a management and it is it it gives accountability to a lot of people so for example you have manager senior manager directors vice presidents you know ceos so it's very very structured it has got a management so the so, VPs and CEOs become the management of it, and each of these individuals has got a certain accountability. Right? Um, um, pardon me, my 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 course today is in English. Some of you may have difficulty in understanding, but do refer to your friends and take help in understanding the meanings of a certain word if you don't get it. Right? Uh, let's look at a group. If you look at a group, you know there is something called security and meaning to a group. If you were to exist as a group, so for example, even in your college, there will be a certain group. Right, you know, four friends coming in together, like the Dilchata, that scene. You know, you might give a name to your group, like a you know, uh, brand Basha or something. You know, it's it's a group, right? Uh, even that group will have a certain com commonality to come together. 
right it should have a sense of culture it'll have a sense of value some beliefs language uh, now if you re really look at the team uh, you know um, and why is team important uh, team is very important for any organization to scale up to be able to the team and collaboration is very very important for any organization to grow and team is a subset of three different sets you know if you if you really understand mathematics and what i told you in the beginning marketing modern marketing is a sub, sub subset of four different sets which is creativity psychology data analytics and technology right uh, similarly a team is a subset of organization group and tribe uh, you know and, and a team is very very essential uh, for you to be able to do better marketing and grow your company right um let's look at a successful uh, alliances maruti suzuki um, an un unbeatable brand over the, over the last 45 50 65 years maybe um uh April was the very first month when Maruti Suzuki uh, showed a zero sale uh, because of lockdown. Obviously, uh, entire month of April that's the first month in the history of that organization where there was no sales recorded. No, they haven't sold a single car in the month of April 2020. Uh, it's, it's really historic for them. Now look at this. This is an asymmetric brand. You know, um, Suzuki. bringing in technology maruti trying to talk about india's culture uh, let's quickly like take a look at this uh, ad and then we'll proceed Look at the look at the look at the compelling emotions this ad is bringing out. You no, know, a man wanting to get home for Diwali. Uh, uh, you know, he's asking for a lift, and a Maruti Swift comes in and offers him a lift. Uh, a bride um, taking a Maruti car in in dowry. You no, know, which which shouldn't ideally be part of her culture, but if, unfortunately, unfortunately, it is still today. Um, you know, um, friends after office hanging out in a Maruti car. um you know taking a pet out for a drive in a car right uh, a vernacular language like hindi usage uh, right um the, the the story begins with uh, showcasing a little bit of festivities of kerala in a wagon or right uh, look at look at the multiple different compelling emotions brought under one advertisement uh, from various parts of this country uh, so starting from kerala going up to the north and they're talking about marriages talking about friendships in office you uh, know they 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 get the culture very very right and therefore they got the brand positioning right after maruti suzuki there was another compelling brand none other than ratan tata who who actually tried to uh, uh, to do a a a big service to this nation uh, in terms of creating tata nano you know a, a car for 1 lakh 25000 to 1 lakh 50000 the cheapest car in the world uh, all all credit goes to him uh, but you know the brand still didn't succeed uh, you know uh, because he still didn't get the emotion and the consumer behavior right you know uh, his aspiration of creating something um something extraordinarily cheap uh, was great he did achieve it too uh, he, he, but his his promotions didn't really capture the emotions uh, which resonated with people who would actually consider buying such a product right so why why is 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 creativity and psychology important in marketing uh, and 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 these are the two subjects uh, which will actually help you create a better brand position in you know in in the minds of the people right um probably if you were to remember me after post today's conversation it it's only going to be the 
because of the kind of emotion that I'm trying to bring in the in the webinar right if I don't bring in the right emotion uh, you don't get it to so consumer behavior as a subject uh, you know people who are really really excited about brand positioning as a subject to focus on the subject uh, we're going to dive deeper into this uh, over the next 10 minutes right uh, India's socio-economic classification. What is socio-economic classification of India? Uh, 1.3 billion people coming together. Uh, you know, uh, Kerala to Tamil Nadu to West Bengal to Gujarat to Maharashtra to you know Rajasthan to Haryana to you know Uttar Pradesh to you know Jammu and Kashmir. Right. Uh, look at the differences in culture. Uh, look at the differences in society. Um, there are three or four major massive set of Indians, the, the, the middle class Indian, uh, the upper middle class Indian, the ultra rich Indian and and the poor Indian. You know, let's broadly classify them as four. You know, but what's the compelling emotion? If you've seen this movie called Diwar by Amitabh Bachchan and Shashi Kapoor, anybody remembers that, you know, there's a very, very famous dialogue there in coming called Mere Paas Ma Hai. Uh, no, today's Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all, you know, a compelling emotion of 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 having a mother on your side, uh, you know, while the other son has got a lot of money, but the mother doesn't like him, you know, because he he earns that money, um, not ethically, you know, he earns that money uh, unethically. Uh, but there's another son who's a who's a police officer. He earns the money ethically uh, the mother stays with him and and this rich brother comes to the younger brother and asks him i have everything that i want what do you have i say, the other brother says no i have my mother with me i don't need the money right that's the kind of emotion the way we eat look at look at the kind of thalis we enjoy you know um, you know even even you know if you go to different parts of tamil nadu you'll find different sorts of food uh, there. If you go to Tanjavur, you'll find a different food. If you go to Coimbatore, you'll find a different food. If you go to Chennai, you may you may find a different style of food. The way we commute in our, you know, in, 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 in the trains, you know, the way we sell fruits and vegetables in a market, the way we travel in a Maruti Suzuki, the way we used to watch news in Doordarshan earlier in those days, uh, the way we celebrate festivities and the way we love art. All these things actually form part of a socio-economic classification. And as a marketer, I can proudly state that India has got one of the best socio-economic classifications hey. in the world. Hello. All right. So um, let's uh, let's uh, uh, let's look at the uh, bottom right portion where we see A1. You know, where we have uh, graduate, postgraduate professionals. You know, who are officers, executives, middle class, the highest level of socio-economic classification. And somewhere here in the A1 category, again, you know, you have graduate, postgraduate, educated people like your Ratan Tatas or your Ambani's who are businessmen and industrials. You know, it can be a Premji, it can be a Naranamuti. They are the highest class of the Indian society. Right, and look at uh, the E2 sector here, right? Um, illiterate, unskilled workers, right? Uh, all these migrant laborers who traveled uh, all the way from Chennai to Uttar Pradesh by foot during the COVID crisis, all of them fall under this category. And in between, there is a huge divide. You know, um, uh, lo look at the way we've classified uh, the way we sell our products. So if you were to sell a Nirma washing powder, probably, you know, uh, you know, or if I were to target rural marketing, I, I may just focus on these. If you can see my cursor, I may just focus on this area, right? If I were to sell ultra luxury products, you know, uh, highly expensive products, I may, I may look at only this category. Right. So let's say I want to sell a perfume for about 10,000 bucks or you know, one lakh rupees or two lakh rupees of perfume, one bottle of perfume. I may look at this A1, A2 categories, right, to sell that too. You know, uh, typically the middle class comes in here, right? You, you can see that, you know, here and this, 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 this category, uh, you can, you can actually see the middle class and you can see the rest of it as uh, the lower middle class uh, category. Now, Having said, talked about the socio-economic classification of this country, this is very, very important uh, in brand positioning as a as a subject. Let's look at um, you know, um, uh, you know, one company which gets it right, you know, which gets their uh, emotions right every time uh, is uh, this. Let me know which company did this.
night before the dessert course, we present for your pleasure the traditional cheese trolley. To start, we have an excellent clochette, creamy, very nice, very light. Next, a brebis, hearty, with a surprising bite, I think you'll find. And finally, the pièce de résistance, a very special, very well. <laughs> <laughs> This is me. I think it's apparent that I need to rethink my life a little bit. I can't help myself. I, I like good food, okay? And good food is, is hard for a rat to find. It wouldn't be so hard to find if you weren't so picky. I don't want to eat garbage, Dad. Uh, <laughs> what is that? I don't really know. You don't know. And you're eating it. You know, if you can sort of muscle your way past the gag reflex, all kinds of food possibilities open up. This is what I'm talking about. I don't think any of this would have come up, but we happen to live in Paris, France. And it's so easy to find good food in Paris. It's just dangerous. You gotta rethink your life. He's right. Let it go, Dad! Creativity, right? Every single time. Let's 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 look at how do they do it. I, I'll just skip this slide for you. You know, it's not relevant for you. Oh, uh, there's an underlying emotion. You know, uh, the, the culture of uh, mom. Uh, you know, once again, Happy Mother's Day to all of you. Um, uh, no matter which part of the world you go. Uh, a mother and a child relationship, whether it is a human being or whether it is uh, any animal, uh, the underlying emotion, irrespective of your geography, of your culture, remains the same. And, and this is a fun, fundamental uh, philosophy of marketing that you should really understand if you were looking at um, you know, uh, coming up with something creative uh, to a certain set of audience. No? Um, what does Pixar Animation Studio do and how do they do it right? Uh, they care about people first. They allow a lot more people to be creative. Uh, they encourage self-expression and diversity of thought. They have a culture of open communication. They give a purpose of you, know, you being there. You know? Why should I work for a company? If I were to work for uh, an XYZ company, am I really wanted here? You know, you know, am I valued? Do I have a purpose of being here? Right, uh, that's a very very important uh, feeling. Uh, you know, if you're part of a larger organization, uh, you should be given a sense of purpose. You should be given a sense of belonging uh, to a certain uh, company. If you don't, uh, then probably it's not the right place for you. Right? Um, you know, the way you decide and encourage a community and conversation among your peers. Right? And a constructive feedback mechanism. Don't don't give feedback just to harm or hurt a person. Let's be let's be polite in the way you're doing feedbacks and be constructive. You know, give give valid feedbacks. You know, don't unnecessarily give feedback, you uh, know, which doesn't really make sense to somebody, right? Um, remove your false vanity. Uh, vanity is nothing but pride. Um, you know, everybody has got their own egos. Everybody thinks that I am the superhero in this world, uh, and especially in college as a student, you think that okay, the world is under my feet, uh, but it doesn't. Oh, no, um, it really isn't. Uh, you will realize it once you grab a job and then go out, start working. You know, you'll realize that okay, you are you are nobody. You, you are absolutely a nobody. You know, and we are all nobody in this world. You know, nothing is going to change if I, you and I go out of this world. Nothing is going to change this world. The world is going to remain as is. Uh, that's a realization which comes with experience. You know, and and take off your false pride, false vanity, uh, out of your mind. Take a look at this film. You know, this film is about you know, a lot of people creates a divide in the society. Uh, this was a this was a corporate film that I did a um, couple of couple of months back to talk about uh, uh, corporate social responsibility. You know how a company should be giving back to the society. Uh, do do watch film. At first, we had each other. Then we built a wall. A wall of great height and length that divide. What happens if we still built a wall? It will be occupied with the graffiti of being human. Graffiti for peace. 
we paint it with love. Save the earth and graffiti to inspire. And if we do not inspire our children, who else will? Allow your imagination to free up some space for compassion, for some care. Yours socially responsible, the wall. Relevance Lab. The reason I have showed you this campaign is because, you know, uh, when we grew up, there are a lot of skills that uh, a formal uh, school education or a college education doesn't really give it to you, but it comes from your families, from your parents, uh, which is essentially a skill called uh, compassion. You know, uh, what is compassion? You know, to feel or empathize for somebody else. You know, you see somebody in trouble or you feel the pain, right? You know, you see that, you know, there is a beggar on the street, uh, clothless, starving. If you feel the pain, then that's compassion. You know, you feel that, you know, I should help that poor man. And that's compassion. You know? and, and when we grow up, it's, it's very important to uh, have that feeling of compassion. And great marketers do have great compassion because that's when they they are able to bring in the right emotions in some of their campaigns, right? Uh, so this this was done, you know, around the time when a lot of people around the world were building a lot of walls. Uh, the wall that actually you saw in the film was the Great Wall of Berlin, you uh, know, uh, the, the 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 Berlin Wall which divided the East and the West Berlin. And what happened when people, when 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 politicians or government build a wall? What does happen? Uh, people are compassionate. People are liberal in their thoughts. They come out and paint those walls with love. So what essentially the way I've positioned uh, the brand here is, uh, you know, we are a brand, you know, which is not going to get uh, fallen. You know, Relevance Love is a company, is a brand which is not going to get divided by whatever you're going to say. We will continue giving it back to the society. Right, and that's the message uh, which actually is going out through the through the video. Um, let's uh, look at it. So, uh, don't become a you know when when you're trying to learn. Uh, don't 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 keep your aspiration of becoming a marketing manager or an HR manager or you know, something like that. Uh, aim f aim for much bigger. Try to become leaders, and and don't become a boss. Uh, don't think that I want to become a boss. I want hundred people coming and reporting to me, that shouldn't be your aspiration. Uh, but a true leader like an APJ Abdul Kalam uh, will always be look, looked up to and there are not many, many great inspiring stories about him. You can just go ahead in YouTube and start looking for that one individual and, and, and it talks volume about a man who lived uh, his life in, a, in, a, in our times, you know, in, in, a, in a great time. Um, uh, the future of work is going to be a lot to do with imagination, creativity, and strategy. The reason I'm showcasing you this slide is because uh, with, with, with the advent of technology, with the advent of robotic process automations or robotics or artificial intelligence or machine learning kind of subjects, uh, technology is eating away a lot of our jobs, a lot of our jobs, right? Uh, human beings will be left only with jobs which deals with probably creativity strategy a lot more to do with imagination and, and various other stuff so so you know uh, once again re-emphasizing when you're learning marketing uh, try to look at marketing as an art uh, and not only as a science you know no harm in learning the science space of marketing but do look at marketing as an art as well uh, that's going to help you a long long way uh, last campaign here um, uh, this is uh, this is a uh, personal promotional video, uh, take a look at this. Everyone has a story. Once upon a time, when you were a kid, you loved it. And when we grow up, we all want to be heard. Sometimes on camera. Sometimes with your friends. Even a bumblebee has a story to tell the flowers for honey. Even I have a story to share and numbers to crunch. When I tell a story, I'm always behind the camera and create stories that last forever. Allow me to tell your story.
how how am i look look at the video you know how am i trying to position myself you know i'm trying to positioning myself as a storyteller you know you know, i i do compelling stories for for brands and when i do tell stories you know i am not in front of the camera but i'm behind the camera i write it um and 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 a good psychologist uh, can be a good writer or uh, you know um and also you know uh, a good psychologist uh can be a great marketer you uh, know uh, that's a subject that has been ignored as part of marketing management um in various campuses and various curriculums uh wherever i talk i've been i've been telling people that you no know, you have to uh you have to sort of look at marketing very very differently than what uh what is being taught today uh you know as per the curriculum uh last but not the least uh least uh, this is my book it's a collection of 70 poems uh available in amazon kindle um as well as in amazon um and and in hicken bottoms and various other stores stores are not open currently because of covid if you think that you know i did justice to this webinar you can go pick up a copy of my book it's just 49 bucks um thank you so much for your time and i will uh, uh i am open to questions Thank you.